the best bass fishing teams in the Midwest are at Table Rock Lake for Heartland's Buddy event. It's nearly summer and fish are moving deeper, but that doesn't mean they can't be caught. Watch and learn how the best anglers around find and catch bass in transition. Don't go away. 43,000 acre Table Rock Lake, located in the Ozark Mountains of southwest Missouri, is one of the nation's premier bass fisheries. Largemouth spotted and smallmouth bass can be caught at the rock, and all three species grow large here. Table Rock Lake is probably best known for its deep, gin clear waters, but the reservoir also has plenty of shallow, stained water as well. Any serious bass fisherman should be able to find an area of Table Rock Lake that suits their style of fishing. This is Heartland Tournament Association's second stop to Table Rock Lake this year. Our first stop in April showcased just how impressive the fishing can be on this lake. Now that's a bass, boys. But that was during the spawn. Now it's June. The bass are off their beds and many fish are moving to their deeper summertime locales. Some anglers might feel intimidated this time of year, but not the fishermen we've selected for this week's show. Today we'll be following four teams to compete in Heartland's 2004 Buddy event on Table Rock Lake. The four include the team of Junior Stewart and Lance Williams, Pete Winters and Bob Bowser, Jack Stack and Steve Choate, and Kelly Power and Bill Beck. These teams are known for their fish catching prowess on Table Rock Lake, and you're about to get an inside peek into how they do it. Table Rock's lake level is 917, about two feet above pool. Water temperature is between 75 and 84 degrees. Water clarity is three to four feet of visibility up major river arms, with 10 feet of visibility at the lower end of the lake. The forecast calls for clouds all day with a chance of rain in the morning. Highs are expected into the upper 80s. As in each Heartland Buddy event, the team with the largest cumulative weight of bass wins. The limit six fish with a minimum length of 15 inches. Let's get out on the water. We find Jack Stack and partner Steve Choate near the mouth of the James River. They're trying to fish a deep tree row with spoons, but another boat is sitting on the sweet spot. Junior Stewart and Lance Williams are just south of point 13 in the James River. They're fishing an extended pea gravel point that drops into a ditch with scattered brush. Their weapons of choice, jewel football jigs. <coughs> Will he keep or not? Here's Kelly Power and Bill Beck up the James River near Cape Fair. Kelly explains how he and Bill are fishing. Uh, basically just fishing, you know, gravel roll-offs, post-spawn fish. They've just staged up out here and they're feeding before they move out to the, the deep water. Um, throwing a crankbait and a jig and just trying to get in front of one of their faces and get bit. Uh, most of these fish will be here for about another two weeks, and then they'll move on out to the structure. And the biggest key is just finding shad. Back to Stewart and Williams, south of Point 13 in the James. That'll keep. Make your boat safe and comfortable with Flatfoot. Flatfoot is designed to recess any brand of 0-1-5. The boat that was sitting on Jack Stack and Steve Choate's tree row is left. They should now be able to fish the spot effectively. Get the net. Net? Yep. Jack hooks up with a fish that grabbed his spoon as he ripped it through the row of trees. Oh, how good that is, right? He as good as, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's starting to fight now. Watch me, he's gonna jump. It's a white. I thought you told me it wasn't a white. I didn't think it was. Huh? I didn't think it was. Yeah, I'm wasting my time on these things. Unfortunately, white bass can't be weighed in. But Stack hooks up again with what might be the right species. Yeah, I got him, and it's nice. Don't do it. You just might see a guy bringing a stick here. Feels like nothing. Oh, that's... 
Dig it. Dig it. It feels weird. Nope. See, we wanted to wait till that boat got out of the way. You know, because if he saw us do this, we'd be here forever. You know, I'm gonna go back in that tree. Well, number one, ah, uh, number one. That tree is right there. Zach and Choate are targeting a row of trees that taper off into 60 feet of water. Bass are suspended in the trees, recuperating from the spawn. The fish will move off into 60 foot depths and deeper as the summer wears on. Back to Stewart and Williams. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. No, he won't eat them. Better check them anyway. You find Pete Wenners and Bob Bowser in the White River arm near Big Bay. The anglers are vertical jigging in 20 to 40 feet of water. Ready? Uh, he won't make it. Sorry. To Wenners' surprise, this fish is big enough for the live well. Jack Stack is now vertical jigging his spoon on the tree row near the mouth of the James River. Oh, God. Winters hooks up again while drop shotting a wacky rigged watermelon red zoom finesse worm in the White River. This left side here. Come on, buddy, be 15 inches now. This gives Winter and Fowler their second keeper, but Pete's not done. Get the net, Bob. Doesn't feel very big. It ain't, don't worry about it. I got it. Steve Choate has one on his spoon. Yeah. 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 Everyone counts. Pete Winters and Bob Fowler are moving near Campbell Point. Fowler's hooked up with a fish on a brown and purple football jig. Yeah. Junior Stewart's got a nice one near point 13. Right. <laughs> he won't keep. <laughs> uh. Kelly Power may have dredged up something nasty on his deep diving crankbait. It's a body. We're cutting the line. It turns out it's just some brush. Jack Stack and Steve Choate are now jerking spoons in Mill Creek. You can see him working that fish. Good. Please don't let it jump. Coming at you. Oh, over here. Don't, 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 no, 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 no. Hey, I caught him on the fly. I just want you to know that I caught him with on the fly. <laughs> Thank you, JP. <laughs> That's two weeks in a row. Two weeks in a row, he's caught one of my fish in the air. Oh, oh. Junior Stewart lands the team's third keeper. He just ate that jewel football jig. Three to go. Stewart and Williams are hopping their football jigs off an extended pea gravel point that breaks off into a ditch with brush piles. Their bites are coming off the edge of the point and off the brush piles. Kelly Power and Bill Beck are struggling up to James. Power explains what's running through his mind. I guess, first off, hoping I can find a spot that there's not another boat sitting on, as much as anything. But just waiting for these fish to turn on and feed. I mean, they are just not real aggressive right now. You know, and usually later in the afternoon it gets better because the boat traffic, we get a lot of guys that come up here. They can't catch them, but they know that there's fish caught up here. And they usually all leave. Well, get to that. So then, when you get to buy it, you lose one. That's a good fish. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's a keeper. No, no. No, I'm just pulling hard. If things couldn't be any worse, that was good. Power breaks his line while casting his crankbait. Pete Winters hooks up in the James River. Little fish. This one's close, but not close enough. Wow. This a year, you get cloud cover like this, these fish just scatter out. Um, you know, they're, they'll roam a lot more and follow the sad schools around. And when you get some sunshine, it'll normally make those fish hold tighter. I mean, these fish aren't out here around any cover. They're not around brush piles. They're just following shad. And uh, it's just that sunshine holds them a lot tighter to the shad. And you, they use them for cover and for food. They can be hiding in them one minute and eat them the next. And, uh, you know, down lake right now, that's what Bill was just saying. He wishes he had this day tomorrow because you know, down lake, you get a lot more topwater bites and fish will move up a lot quicker than what they will up here. You know, just, they're, they're just scattered out. Jack Stack has switched techniques and is now swimming a four-inch smoke-colored grub in Mill Creek. Stack uses an older Lowrance paper graph to locate deepwater bass. Many deepwater fishermen feel a paper graph shows them a much more detailed representation of what's beneath their boat. There he is. That's a good fish. I lost him. God dang it. Oh, jeez, that was a good fish. Stewart and Williams make a move to a channel bank and connect. That's keeper. No, Good one. The team of Power and Beck finally hook up. But it won't keep. Jack Stack and Steve Choate have moved back to the mouth of the James. Oh, that's a good fish. All right, thank you. There he is. Size? I don't know. Could Power and Beck's luck be changing? No. I'm thinking I'm gonna pull up in a spot here in just a minute. And they're gonna eat like they're supposed to. Everything's getting right. And it's just have patience and confidence. We're gonna come out of this field smelling like a rose. Never give up. <laughs> It'll take long to catch you. Wind them in, does it? No bite. Patience and confidence. You know, half of them boats are back down lake dragging the rig around because they give up because it's, it's a chore. I mean, you just, you know, knowing they're here makes a big difference. One last cast and we're gonna go. Junior Stewart and Lance Williams move to the mouth of Ants Creek. Ready, 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 ready. There you go, buddy. This gives them another keeper. This time Stewart's hooked up. That'll make a show. With time running out, Kelly Power and Bill Beck move farther up the James River to an old river channel roll-off. Near them is the formidable team of Terry Thomas and Sam Smith. Not near enough, Terry. How about you? We've been playing lots of catch and release today.
I've had about all that I can take today. Pete Winters and Bob Bowser have moved to the James River. Yep. Stewart and Williams are loading the boat at the mouth of Ants Creek. Want to call one? Never mind. Eric and Lloyd Holt are the first team to the scales with an impressive bag of bass. They're going to have to beat 15.40 to take the lead, and I don't see that that's going to be a problem. Here's your new leaders. Eric and Lois, whoa, 20.4. 20.44. Their big limit puts the Holtz at the top with 20.44 pounds. Next are Terry Thomas and Sam Smith with a big kicker fish. Big old fish. Five. Now we're going to give him six pounds even. Six pounds even, and uh, if you're going to, they got six of them. I think they got it. I think they got it. Looky here. And they do. 21.38. 21 21.38 pounds. Sam Smith, Terry Thomas. Thomas and Smith take the lead from Eric and Lloyd Holt with 21.38 pounds. The team of Darren Plank and Larry Wilcox have a good limit of fish that could be enough to take the lead from Thomas and Smith. They don't have a fish in there less than three and a quarter pounds. We'll see what they got. Just short, 20, 54, 20.54. The winners of the 2004 Heartland Buddy event on Table Rock Lake are Terry Thomas and Sam Smith with 21.38 pounds. Second goes to Darren Plank and Larry Wilcox with 20.54 pounds. They caught their fish on Carolina Rig 6-inch Green Pumpkin Zoom Lizards fished on points in the James River. In third, Eric and Lloyd Holt with 20.44 pounds. The Holtz also fish points in the James River, but they use 5 8 ounce prototype jewel football jigs, Norman DD-22 and Rapala DT-16 crankbaits. Here's the best of the rest. Here's how our on-the-trail featured anglers finish. When we come back, learn how first place finishers Terry Thomas and Sam Smith caught their tournament winning limit. Don't go away. 38, 21.38 pounds, Sam Smith, Terry Thomas. What a bag of fish. The first fish we caught this morning, we caught off a little old sunken island, and it was a six pounder and caught it on a Zara spook. Uh, we ran up James River. And uh, I guess the second fish we caught uh, was uh, flipping a uh, red shad worm. We caught one about 15 minutes later on a uh, Bomber Square A crankbait. 11 o'clock, all the boats ran out of the river, and the fish started biting a little bit, and they were on the bank, uh, probably in two foot of water. You take and pitch a worm up on the bank and just give it a hop, and they would hit it on the hop normally. We caught three real quick, about 12 blocks, someplace along there. And the rest of the day, we never caught any keepers. All the rest of the fish we caught the rest of the day were short. Probably the reason we fish so good together is we don't ever get in each other's way, and we don't ever crowd each other. And we normally fish two different baits. So we're never in each other's way, and we've had real good success doing that. Not like a, some of the fishermen who get up and elbow to elbow with each other and fight all day. Uh, and we're good friends. You know, we, we know how to fish together. Next week, net. Oh, good fish here, boy. We're back at Table Rock Lake for Heartland's Pro-Am event. We'll be following the top anglers in the Midwest as they cast for cash on this incredible fishery. Want to be a better bass fisherman? Watch this show. Nice job.